The purpose of this video is to seek peace and prosperity by bringing two opposing sides together. The Big Mac and the Whopper. Today I'm home alone and I'm bored and when I become bored I think of really unusual things to do. So today we're going to freeze dry fast food. We got a Big Mac and we got a Whopper. I like both of them. The Big Mac holds a special place in my heart because when I lived in England when someone was going to go into London and I was up at Alkenberry RAF when someone would travel down to uh, London he'd go around and get orders from everyone and uh, would pick up between 50 and 100 Big Macs to, to uh, take them back to the base so that's the only way we could get really American food over there so I got a special place in my heart for the Big Mac but I'm going to be unbiased and we're going to go ahead and see how easy it is to freeze dry a Big Mac and a Whopper and then bring them back. First we're going to do the Big Mac. Now if for some reason you've been off world and don't know what a Big Mac is, well let me tell you what it is. To all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. Okay, hopefully that sums it up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to weigh the Big Mac to see how much it weighs and when it comes time to reconstitute it, how much moisture to put it back in, to put back into the, the food, to bring it back to where it should be. So we have 204 grams worth of food. So the theory is, if I can freeze dry this and then bring it back, and if it's going to be 204 grams, then I'm going to count that as a success. Now, of course, this has a lot of bread in it, and that's going to be a challenge, but I think I can figure this out. Now, when I first went to McDonald's, I asked the kind person at the window there if I could have my Big Mac with all the sauces on the side so that things wouldn't get so soggy, but the young man that was there taking my money kind of gave me this black blank look like deer in the headlights, and I thought, well, okay, just give me a Big Mac. So anyway... That's what I got. For the next one, we have a flame grilled Whopper. Ooh, who doesn't like that? Now, when I went to Burger King and I asked them to do uh, sauces on the sides, you know what they told me? Hold the pickle, hold the lettuce, special orders don't upset us. So we ask is that you let us serve it your way. So, I was more successful with the Whopper that I was with the Big Mac. So we're going to go ahead and see what the weight on the Whopper is. Our Whopper is 233 grams. If I can pull all this off, there's no doubt in my mind that we can have Big Macs and Whoppers someday on Mars. The hamburgers have been deconstructed. So here's our Big Mac. And here's our Whopper. So we have on the Big Mac, we have the top bun, the hamburger, the lettuce and the special sauce, the middle bun, the second burger with the cheese, and the bottom bun. On the Whopper side, we have the top bun, we have the flame broiled burger, uh, this is the top bun that we have the lettuce, tomatoes, onions, pickles, and they also gave me the ketchup and uh, mayonnaise in little packets. Now, over on the Big Mac side, we have the special sauce. I'm sure the special sauce has mayonnaise in it. Mayonnaise and I do not get along very well. And I think the special sauce also has maybe some ketchup and some pickle relish. So I'm a little bit skeptical on how this is going to freeze dry. Everything else will freeze dry just great. So we're going to throw this into the freezer to pre-freeze. 
and then into the freeze dryer it goes. And here are my freeze dried burgers. So we have the Whopper on this side, and we have over on this side two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. So we're going to go ahead and weigh these and see how they came out. The Whopper is now 106 grams. It was 233. Now for the Big Mac. Okay, the Big Mac is now 107. And it was 204. So, introducing the freeze dried Big Mac and the freeze dried Whopper. So, the Whopper probably looks better than the, the Big Mac. The Big Mac's kind of too tall. So we're going to go ahead and take these apart and we're going to reconstitute them and see how they come out and most of all see how uh, the bread will turn out after it's been freeze dried and most of all how will it come out for taste. So this is probably going to be, this will probably take overnight but I think I'm going to have some good results. The meat and the cheese will need to rehydrate in the refrigerator because we don't want once these get wet they're going to have a two hour time period at room temperature so we don't get sick or anything and so we're going to rehydrate those in the fridge I'm surprised how well this turned out because I thought this would have a lot of mayonnaise in it it probably does but it actually turned out to be pretty good. All right, so we lost with the with the little hamburger patties and the cheese. We lost 40 grams of water. So I'm going to measure out 40 grams here. And we're going to put 40 grams back in this container. And then with our special sauce, lettuce, pickles, we lost 13 grams. So we're going to put 13 grams back with that. And these two will go back to the refrigerator to rehydrate. I added 44 grams of water to the hamburger patty and I add 56 grams of water to the fixins. So I'm going to put those in the fridge overnight or however long it may take and we'll see if we can re reconstruct these sandwiches. The difficult issues with freeze drying bread, pancakes and other baked goods is they freeze dry well but how do you rehydrate them? Now this is my bun from my Big Mac. It has three pieces to it. Now, one thought about bringing these back is to put them in a bag and then put like a damp piece of paper towel in with the bag. I do this with brown sugar and it brings hard brown sugar back to life in just a day or so. 
I've tried this with freeze-dried bread, and I'm sure it'll work, but it'd probably take several days to do it. There's another method that I've had some success with, and it's the same thing you do if you have, say, a piece of French bread or a baguette or a loaf of bread that has dried out. And I've had some success with this method. The first step is running your dried out bread under a faucet. The first time I did this, I was a little bit skeptical, but it has worked pretty well. And it's not like you just put a few drops of water on the bread, you actually douse it under a faucet. So here's our water, here's my bread, and it's just like you're going to rinse it off with water. So we've given this a thorough dousing. The next step is to wrap it in aluminum foil. There are three pieces of Big Mac. I'm going to wrap it in aluminum foil. Just like that. Next step is to place it in a cold oven. Set the temperature for 300 degrees for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, take it out. Oh, let's see how it did. This is the top bun, and the top bun has a bit of a crack in it, so we got to be careful with that. It feels, well, it's hot, but it feels soft. Not, it's not soggy, it's not damp, but we're going to leave this out for a while. We don't want to wrap this up again because we want some of the moisture to be able to uh, evaporate. So let's leave this out probably till it cools down, and then once it's cold, or room temperature, put it back into a bag like this until we're ready to make our sandwich. There's a section on the top of my top bun that's a little bit on the hard side. The center side is, is soft and some of the areas is soft. If you end up with a hard section or hard surface, just get a piece of damp paper towel and just kind of wrap it around there and just put it in the bag with your other bun pieces. It's been about 24 hours since we took the uh, Big Mac and Whopper out of the freeze dryer and I think we're to the point that we're ready to reconstitute our sandwiches. Okay, so we have the buns first. This is my Whopper bun, which was hard as rock, but now it's uh, it's fairly pliable. It's uh, I'm impressed. It turned out pretty good. Now it's cold, but I think once these things are heated up, it's going to be much better. And let's see, this is. hamburger patty and my grandkids have asked me why didn't I get a Whopper with cheese the Big Mac has cheese I, I guess I should have got a Whopper with cheese so I guess I'll have to ask for their forgiveness on that one now this shouldn't be shocking when I tell you that vegetables that are freeze-dried they do not come back being nice and crunchy. If you want to know what the vegetables are going to be like, just throw vegetables in your freezer and you'll see what the consistency of these are kind of soft. And if you've ever tried freezing lettuce, lettuce does not freeze well at all. So these lettuce pieces are really kind of wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. And 
I've been debating if I want to put the lettuce on there, but I think I need to. The lettuce is actually kind of disgusting. If I was doing this for other reasons, I'd probably put fresh lettuce on here. But we want to see this through to the final result. Okay, so this this is the whopper. Doesn't look bad. Oh, my tomato's sliding off. Doesn't look bad, but we'll see how that goes. The next is going to be the Big Mac. Now these are our buns, and I had a hard time with the top bun, so I just had a, a very, very damp piece of paper towel to soften the top bun up. So that's the bottom bun. Let's see, I'm trying to think in reverse order how this goes. To all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. Okay, I think I can remember that. Uh, okay, so on the bottom is our patty with cheese. Okay, that was there. And then we have to have some of our secret sauce. And the secret sauce has the lettuce that's in there. Now, I was saying earlier that when one of the guys used to go into London when I was stationed in England, they'd bring back a bunch of Big Macs from London, and we ate them cold. They're wonderful. Okay, then we have our second patty and then let's see we got our pickle here and I know there's a pickle under this rest of the secret sauce and the onions we got a piece of broken hamburger there Anything. And this is our top bun there. Okay, so our sandwich has been recreated, but now we also have to see how much they weigh. Okay, our Whopper is 211 grams, and our Whopper originally was 233 so I am missing 22 grams of moisture and my bet it's going to be in the bun. The Big Mac weighs 195 grams Ooh, and it was 196 grams so the weight is pretty close to what they were originally. So, now the question is, how do they taste? Well, I'm not going to eat a cold sandwich. I'm going to have to warm these up. And even if this was not freeze-dried, warming up tomatoes and pickles and lettuce isn't appealing in any case. But, hey, we're going to see this through and see what happens. Okay, this is the Whopper. And with the Whopper came ketchup and mayonnaise. So I had them put this on the side because because I wanted it my way. Okay, so we're going to put some ketchup on here and the mayo. and the top bun. And I have some guinea pigs here to taste this. 
That's what grandchildren are for. This is not cutting well at all. We're just kind of making a big mess of it, so this is going to be a little bit on the messy side. Okay. Can we get a square? Now you had a you had a whopper yesterday, so you should know what it tastes like. Kind of. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. So try it out. Give me your feedback. That's good. I mean, you would think from the texture of cutting it, that it would be like more crumbly, if that makes sense, but it's good. No brands of toppings are my favorite, but. It's edible. The onions and tomatoes didn't fare well, but they never do. So, the, the Whopper's not bad. Okay, next is the Big Mac. Hopefully I can cut this better. Oh, I gotta heat it up first. Okay, now the Big Mac is heated up. See if I can cut this better than the Whopper without having it disintegrate. The Big Mac doesn't have the whole pieces of onions and stuff. Everything else is kind of minced in. Alright. Take a chunk. Okay. Big Mac tasting test. Some of the feedback I'm getting is from the top bun. It's been a little bit hard. Uh, I, I realized that. I tried to make it a little bit softer. It's pretty good too. Would I say as good as if it just came out the drive through window? Probably not. But the biggest problem, again, is the lettuce is really kind of, uh, how to describe the lettuce? The burger feels like more stale but more juicy. Okay. So one of the comments stale. is the burger tastes more juicy but kind of stale. I don't know. Maybe you just got a weird shot. But it was fine. And this is coming from teenagers. <laughs> Eric's not even fully licensed teenager. So we had the, the Big Mac and the Whopper and the comments were pretty positive. Uh, the buns, the Whopper bun came back really, really good. The top of the Big Mac was, even after I wrapped it with a, a damp paper towel, had a couple of uh, hard edges on it. The cheese was really good. The burger was good. The special sauce and the onions were good. The whole onions uh, that were on the Whopper they're like in the circular pattern. We're hard to separate. They just kind of pulled out when I was slicing it. Pickles are okay. The tomatoes were kind of mushy, but that's to be expected. So, all in all, what do I think about this project? Well, could it go to Mars? Yeah, I could go to Mars. And if Matt Damon was marooned on Mars with nothing but potatoes, he would gladly go for this. So anyway, this has been interesting. I hope you learned something. I had fun doing this. Uh, thank you for your time. Please subscribe. I'll send you another video soon, especially if I get bored again. Thank you.